Hello everyone, my name is Confidence. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a CRUD application on AppSmith using the Fastor database from Firebase. Um, together, we'll be building this little to-do application you can see on the screen. Uh, it's actually a really nice productivity tool as it allows us to manage to-dos. And as you can see, it's, it is fully functional because right here on the page, we can see a list of to-dos that we have to do. We can easily browse through them by using the list here. And we can go ahead to create a new to do. Say, for example, build to do app. I can select the dates, but I'm just going to leave that as default and I'm going to save this. And right here on the screen, you can see that that tag is showing up. And when I'm done with this to do, I can click on the done button and you can see that it has been removed from the list. So, this is what we're going to be building together throughout the course of this video. And by building this application, you learn how to connect your AppSmith app. To Firebase, we also see how to read data from your Firebase database. We also go through ways in which you can create data or delete data from your Firebase uh, database. So this is what we'll be covering throughout the course of this video. Let's get started. So for us to get started, I'm going to head over to my AppSmith account and I'll go ahead to create a new application. Uh, let's give this application a name. Uh, let's call this Firestore to do. And there we have successfully named this application. The next thing we need to do would be to head over to the DB query section and create a new data source. Here we'll be selecting the faster data source because that is where we want to uh, read documents from and store documents to. So let's go ahead to name this data source. I'm just going to name this fire store. And uh, with the form provided, we can go on to um, supply credentials to connect to our Firestore instance. So I'm going to head over to the Firestore um, console and right here you can see the to-dos we have on the database. You can see a list of um, to-do collections and they are all under the to-do app collection. And each to-do has three fields that are consistent across all to-dos. We have a created field which is a date, we have a due field which is also a date and we have a task which is the uh, which is a string containing the name of the tax we want to do. So this is what we have in the database and now we can go ahead to connect to the database. So to connect to the database, click on the gear icon right here and head over to the project settings. Um, go under the service account tab and here is where we get to pick um, credentials that we need to connect to our Firebase instance. So right here where it says database URL, you can just go ahead to copy all of this because we would be needing it on the AppSmith app form. So the first detail we have right here is the database URL. I'm just going to paste all of that there and we have supplied the database URL. The next thing we need to also supply would be the project ID. And for that, I'll be pasting all of what I just copied and I'll be taking away the domain just so that we just have the uh, project ID showing up. So the project ID is just this part of the text between the Firebase domain and the HTTPS. So that is what I have there under the project ID. And the last thing I'll need to provide would be the service account credentials. So to get your service account credentials, you will need to click on the generate new private key button. And what this will do is that it is going to download a JSON file that contains your service um, key credential. So I'm just going to download this. And here I have the file downloaded. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to open up this file and copy its contents. So I am opening this up in uh, text edit. You can see it. So I'm just going to copy all of this and close this up. And then go back to my AppSmith app and paste this into the service account credentials. So I can click on the test button to see if everything works and it does because I have a success message here. Then I would go ahead to save this. The next thing I want to do here is that I want to create a query that will actually go to fetch to-dos from my Firestore database. So to do that, I'll click on the new query button. So the first thing I want to do here would be to give this um, query a name. So let's call this get to-do. And for its method, I want to get all to-dos from the database. So I'm selecting get documents in collection. And for the collection part, remember that going back to the Firestore database, we have a to-do app collection. So this is where we'll be reading all our data from. So I'm going to set that to be the um, collection part, to-do app. 
and here we can choose to um, order the data coming from the database. So what I would like to do here is that I want to order the data coming by the created date. So I'm just going to say created. And I want it such that new items show up first on the list. So let's run this to see what we get. And we can see um, an array of responses coming from the database. So we have uh, get to the query configured. What we want to do now would be to actually build UI widgets to display this information. So for that, I'll need a list widget. But just before making use of a list widget, I want to put everything in a container widget so that I can um, easily move everything together as a group. And now I'll drag a list widget into it. And there we have a list train up. So I'm just going to resize this so that everything fits nicely. And now I have everything properly resized. So what I'll do is that um, on this list widget, I'll link the data coming from the get to this query right here so that we would be able to see that data. So I'm going to take all of this out and then I'll go ahead to link the data coming from that query by calling the query name and dot data, binding the data here. So right now I have the data coming from the query showing up on the list widget. We can see it on the evaluated value pane. The next thing I want to do here is that I would like to actually display that data. So let's go ahead to do that. I'll need a few text widgets right here. And for the ones here, I'm just going to resize them because they would hold the value of uh, the response coming from the API. So let's call this task. And for its value, I'm going to say current item dot task. And there we have the task showing up. Then for the other text, what I want to display here would be the due date. So I'm just going to say due. And for its value, I'm going to say current item dot due. And we can see that we have the due date showing up. But you notice that this date is not looking human friendly. So what we can do is that we can easily use the built-in moment library to prettify the date. So I'm going to say moment and pass the date in. And I can say dot from now. And we can see that the date is now showing in a more human readable form. So what I can still do is that I can go ahead to style this so that we have the date showing up in green text. So the next thing we need to do here would be to actually write the flow that would enable us to mark it to do as done. And for that, I'll need a button widget. So I'm just going to drag one right here. Um, let's resize this a bit. All right. So I'm going to set this to be done. And uh, let's set the button style to be button secondary so that we have um, a nice looking button right here. Then for its on click action, what we want to do is that we want to enable JavaScript and we want to do a few things. Uh, the first thing I want to do is to write an ify right here because I'll need to do a couple of things to get everything working nicely. So inside the ify, the first thing I want to do here would be to store the document path of this particular document in the local store so that when I'm, I'm writing the delete query that will actually go to remove this from the database, I'll be able to easily access the document path. So for that, I'll be using the um, store API that actually references the local storage API. So this will be store, store value. And just as we have with the local storage, I can provide a key name. So this will be to do path. And for its value, I'll be referencing the current item dot underscore ref dot path. And there will, whenever this button is clicked on, uh, what this will go ahead to do would be to store the document path of the selected to do in the local store. So now what I can go on to do would be to write the delete to do query. So I'm going to head over to the file store data source and I'll click on the new query button. So let's give this a name. Let's call this delete to do. Please, yeah. So for its method, I'm going to set this to delete document. And for the documents path, remember we stored the documents path in the local storage. So what we can do right here is just go ahead to access it. So this will be appsmith.store.todo path. And there we'll be referencing the documents path. So let's test this out by clicking on the done button. 
and I can go back to the to do query to see if we have the document path. And right here, we have the document path showing up. So we have that flow configured. Um, the next thing we want to do here is that we actually want to go ahead to call the delete to do query after storing the document path on, on the local store. So what I can do here is say uh, delete. I can take delete to do dot run. And when that is done, what I would like to do would be to refetch the get to do query so that we have an up to date list. So now I'm going to say get to do dot run after that is successful. And then I can finish this off by putting the semicolon right there. So now we have the complete flow to market to do as done, which actually deletes the to do. So what I'm going to do right now is to give it a test run. I'm going to click on the delete button and we should see um, that item deleted. We can see that that item, which was uh, walk the dog, has been removed from the list. So the next thing we need to do now would be to create a flow that allows us to make new to-dos. So to do this, I would need a form that would enable me to enter information about the to-do. And for that form, I'm just going to be using a modal widget. So I'm just going to drag a modal widget right there. I'm dismissing the modal widget because I want to configure a button to um, dynamically open that modal widget for me. So I'm going to put the button right here and I'm going to set the label of this button to new. And when this button is clicked, what I want to do is to go ahead to open that modal and select the name of the modal I want to open, which in this case is uh, modal one. And we have that configured. So I'm going to click on this button and here we have the modal opened. So right inside this modal, what I want to do is that I will need a few um, inputs so that I can capture the data for the to-do. So I'm going to drag in a few text widgets to serve as labels. And I'll need an input widget to collect the uh, task. And I also need a date picker to collect the uh, due date. So I'm just going to drag those over there. So let's expand this a bit so that we have more room. For the first label, I'm going to set its text to task. And I'm going to go ahead to configure the input. Uh, for the input, I'm just going to call this task input. And every other thing is fine. So for the second label, I'm going to set this to due. And for the date picker, I'm just going to rename this to due date picker. So I'm going to save this. And then we want to configure this confirm button such that when it is clicked on, it calls a query that actually goes to the database to create that to do. And then it closes the model and refreshes the get to do query so that we have an up-to-date list. So let's go ahead to create the query that goes to create a to-do. I'm going to head to the file store data source and I'm going to click on the new query button. So let's call this create to-do and for its method it is going to be set to create document. Uh, for the document part this will be the to-do underscore app and forward slash the document ID. What we want to do here is that we want to automatically generate a to-do ID because Firestore does not, does not do that for us by default. So let's um, write some JavaScript to generate a random ID. So I'm going to be using the math library. So this will be math.random. And there we have a random number. So what we can do is to convert this to string and set a radix of 32. And we can just um, return a nice string from here using the substring method. And we're getting that seven digits. So we have here a script that actually generates a random ID for us. So now we can go ahead to fill in the body for this query. So what we want to do here is to set a JSON string. And the first item we want to be sending up will be the task. For the value of the task, we can pull that from the um, task input we have configured on the form. So this will be task. So this will be task.input.text. And then we can go on to um, pass in the due date. So this will be due. And for its value, I'm going to be pulling that from the due date picker dot selected date. And we have that. And lastly, we also want to pass the created date. So I'm just going to say created. 
and for its value, we want the created date to be automatically set to whatever today's date is. So I'm going to be using the moment library that is built into AppSmith. So this will be moment dot format, and that would automatically give us whatever today's date is. And right here we can see the evaluated value for this query. So we have the query configured, and we are generating the document ID, and we have the body configured. So I'm going to close this up because I want to go ahead to wire everything up with the confirm button. So for the confirm button, I'm just going to edit the label and say save. And when this is clicked on, I want to do a few things. So I'm just going to go into the JavaScript mode. So when this is clicked on, I want to go ahead to call the create to do query. And when this is successful, I want to do two things. Uh, the first thing I want to do would be to rerun the get to do query so that I have an up to date list. And lastly, uh, what I want to do here is to close up this model so I can call the close model method. So I can say close model and pass in the model name, which is model one in this case. So now we have the save button configured and what we can do now would be to give this a test run. So let's, um, uh, let's enter a task in here and I can say uh, walk the dog and I can set a date for this. So let's set this to the 31st. And I can click on the save button and give this a test run to see if everything works. And here we can see that um, task showing up. We have created that task using the create to do query. And then we close the model and refresh the get to do query. And here we see it showing up on the list. So we have functionally created an app that lets us create items, read items from a database, and delete items from the database. And here we have a CRUD app. Uh, so the last thing we need to do would be to beautify the app a bit so that it looks much like the finished application we have right here. So I'm just going to do this in a bit. And I'm going to pause the video here to do that. And now we have the to-do app uh, fully built. In case you're wondering how I did this, I'm using a container widget as you can see. I'm using a container widget. And here I have an image widget within it. So that is how we have the wallpaper effect right here on our application. And now that the application is fully built, you can go ahead to share this application to your friends by inviting them via email, or you can choose to make this application public and share the link with whoever you want to have access to this application. So I'm going to deploy this. And here we have the uh, completely built application showing up. So this is how you can build a CRUD application on AppSmith using the Firebase database. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, get subscribed, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.